we're moving from issues of governance and we're going on to the Nigerian Prize for Literature 2016. We're going to literary issues. <laughs> well, we'll see about people in Ondo and we'll get in touch with them and keep you updated on what's going on there. But now, celebrating literary excellence for the 12th year running, the Nigeria Prize for Literature has since 2004 rewarded eminent writers such as Gabriel Okara for his volume, The Dreamer, His Vision. The Adrian Press Literature rotates yearly amongst four literary genres, prose, fiction, poetry, drama, and children's literature. The 2016 is for prose fiction and comes with a cash prize of $100,000. Next year's prize will be for poetry. But I guess we'll get to hear all of that as we go along. So to help us look at this, is the winner of this year's edition. Hmm. Oh, hold on first. They say a total of 173 authors of prose fiction entered for the competition this year, and only one man came out. So let me start by introducing that man. The last man standing. <laughs> Abubakar Adam Ibrahim, winner 2016 edition Nigeria Prize for Literature. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. Yeah, you don't look like you. Have you seen the money yet? <laughs> 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 okay. And and I just, if I introduce the next guest, who is from NLNG, we'll just get to Ondo and find out what the situation is there now. Well, as you can see, that those are the voters having done their accreditation, casting their vote, and then you see the other ones behind there still doing their own accreditation. When Sean came on earlier on the news, he talked about the process of using the card reader to check the card, thumbprint and all of that to, to just ascertain that you are who you say you are in the course of the voting. So that's what's going on in Ondo. In Akure, to be precise, we're still hearing from our other colleagues around the state as regards the situation there. But so far, it's calm and the elections are going on normally, peacefully. Okay, so let me introduce the other guest. You already see him, Dr. Kudo Erisia A.K., who's the General Manager of External Affairs, Nigerian LNG Limited. Thank you for coming. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to go in company of the winner of the prize. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> <talking about this>. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't answer the question. You said, have so, you seen the money yet? I'm still looking for it. Uh, well, if it's NLNG, it'll come. <laughs> I can vouch for their integrity. Well, I mean, they have... Uh, People of integrity like him, so I'm sure it's come. So tell us, how, no, how's it been? An LNG. How's it been? The, the reaction, how did you feel? <sighs> it's amazing to win that kind of money. Um, but I think it's more amazing to have um, your work recognized for, for its merits, you know. Um, from the people who have read it, who have said, you know, we really enjoyed this thing and we related with it to, to the judges who felt that it was... Uh, they deserve the award. So, are you a, are you a writer by profession? I am a writer by profession. Okay. Um, I've always wanted to be a writer, so I write. That is what I do. Uh, even though I work as a journalist, it's also a kind of writing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but this is your first. This is your first novel. Yes, it's my first novel. But I had a collection of short stories published in uh, 2012. Okay. And how Doctor, did that do in the market? Very well. <laughs> Great. Okay, Rachel, okay. 173 entries. Um, entries, and you picked one. How, how did you, how did how you I manage all of that? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, yeah, one of the good things about holding offices is that you, have, you can have many people to assist you. Yeah. And so we, of course, explore the option of getting uh, people to manage the prize itself through an advisory board. Uh, beyond that, we also had the, them appoint judges. So it depends on what genre uh, and has been the focus for the year. They pick specialists uh, mm -hmm. in that area to look at this. Okay, we'll yeah. take a moment and we'll come back to look at 12 years of the Nigerian Prize for Literature and the Abubakar who's just won this year's own. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> All right, welcome back. We're still watching Sunrise. Dr. Okay, so we're talking about the process that 
yes. you brought about this one. But let's look at it. Let's go back a bit. We'll still come back to Abu Bakr to talk about the price for 2016. But 12 years of doing this, you've had different authors, different winners, and different genre. Has the objective been achieved? Indeed, uh, we are achieving the objective. It's an ongoing process. It's actually a vision. It's beyond just goals. We are speaking about w whatever we can do to help to build a better Nigeria. So this is just one of those streams uh, leading us to that destination that I think will be ever receding, but which will be ever approaching as it happens with every vision. So um, as a writer himself will testify, I think the magnetism, the electromagnetism around writing has obviously increased in intensity uh, since the prize. You know, pri writers have set out purposely to write for the prize, and the writers themselves have influenced many others to begin to write to be like them. And I'm sure that uh, the young man in front of me here uh, will be inspiring thousands and millions of others also to want to be like him. Mm. So that has been infectious. And in the writing community, is probably one of the biggest presents that they have had in recent years. On a lighter note. So it's been really, really, yes. On, <laughs> on a lighter note, you're giving prize for writing. Are you going to give prize for reading too? For reading. <laughs> <laughs> because now this is a question to him. Yeah. You well, I, I, think, I think in a way they do, since they award the uh, prize for literary criticism. So... You read a book and you share your thoughts about it. And you yeah, that's, that's what I actually share. want to ask Indeed. him about. Indeed. Um, your basket seems to be, you're, you're filling up the basket mm. little by little. Prize for science, prize for literature, and now literary criticism. Yeah. Um, how did you arrive at literary criticism? Yeah. In a country where it is said all the time that Nigerians don't read anymore. Yeah. You know, it's just like uh, it, the, the commentaries that you would run uh, against the background of, of news items uh, that are worthy. So the commentaries help you highlight the significant things that have happened in society. So for a news item, you might have maybe two or three paragraphs highlighting what has happened. When you run a commentary on that particular issue, then you get into detail. And then you bring out all the elements and yeah. how they affect society. Yeah. So that's how it is with uh, the, the prize for, 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 for literary criticism. Uh, criticism. So essentially, that is meant then to inspire people to look at the works of Nigerian writers, see what goodness they can find in them, and see areas of improvement which they can highlight. So that way we can continue to improve and improve on writing in Nigeria. Okay. Yeah. Ibrahim. Yes. The pri it's been a long one. So you must have been following, were you indeed following through the past 12 or 11 years of this competition? Um, to an extent, yes, because I happen to be a journalist and I write about literature and arts and culture. So um, in keeping with my job, I have to like keep tabs on on all of that. But if you want to ask me, which I think is what you're trying to do stylistically, if I vote for the prize, the answer is no. <laughs> Let me ask you, have you ever before now submitted an entry for this prize? Um, no, it's not the writer who enters. It's, well, in my case, it's my publishers who submitted. And I think... Um, with my first book, a collection of short stories, they probably did enter, but I think it never got to the uh, to the uh, shortlist. No, not to the shortlist. To the organizers, oh, okay. because there was never an acknowledgement. Well, I remember who won that one. And mm. 2012, Chika Onigwe, I think. Yeah. Huh? Chika yeah, Chika, Chika won. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so uh, you see, you, uh, you you began to use your journalist skills on me now. I well, you, you couldn't have read my mind. Uh, the question I asked you was, have we been following? Uh, yes, you are the journalist. Okay. Now, so let's go back. Yes. The fact that you've done this, and I asked you earlier what the impact has been, you know, but the fact that you've done this, how much of impact would you say it's had on you and your colleagues? Um, well, for me, I think it's, um, it's a life-defining 
process or period, you know. Um, I've known writers who have written all their lives and have never gotten this far. Um, never been shortlisted for a prize like this. And, and no matter how we want to look at it, this prize is one of the biggest literary prizes in the world. Even if it's localized to Nigeria, I mean, the, um, the, the prize at stake is, is one of the largest in the world. So it's a big prize to win. And um, I, I've seen the impacts on, on not only me as a writer, but other writers as well who have, you know, felt encouraged by this and said, well, you know, writers who are based in Nigeria, who writes here in Nigeria, mm -hmm. could actually go this far. And, and there are other younger writers who are aspiring now, who want to, you know, write something and hopefully make some impact. Do you see this affecting journalists? Let's be specific now, because you're a journalist. Do you see it um, affecting and, or inspiring other journalists? to try and write better, because we do read some bobos in the newspapers, which uh, are embarrassing. <clears throat> um, do you think that this effort of yours is going to help them? I hope so. I hope so. Um, someone has described journalism as literature in a hurry. Um, and I think that is what it is. And sometimes we tend to emphasize the... Uh, aspect of the uh, haste rather than the aesthetic and the quality and i, I hope people would, uh, take a cue from this and take their time to actually write properly mm -hmm. um, and apart from writing the usual uh, news stories and all that i think journalists should also take time to write write about different things mm -hmm. write literature if you want but as someone who observes um, history unfolding you know having the front seat in all of this. I think journalists have a unique uh, insight about, about things that are happening in different sectors of, of life, and it's important to write about this and to document them. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure everybody is going to read the newspapers, but people are going to read books eventually, either now or in the future, so yeah. You think? I believe so, yes. Okay. Now, Doctor, <laughs> uh, let's talk about other things that LNG is doing. Um, the, your university support program.